Today we're going to be talking about the new Focal Utopia 2022. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a new edition of the Utopia, and it just came out uh, earlier this year. There's a few small changes to it. It's not actually a huge revision, but it is significant, I think. Um, so there's a couple of interesting things. Obviously, as you can tell, we've got all black color scheme now. Um, these yokes are no longer made out of a sort of uh, checkered carbon fiber pattern. They're now a forged carbon. It's supposed to be a bit, little bit lighter. Um, and I do find the headphones actually slightly lighter than the old ones. And then the big change, which is actually to the voice coil. So the voice coil now is made out of aluminum and copper. Um, and the change was made specifically because some people had issues with the old Utopias. If you boosted uh, EQ in the bass really, really hot on these and then played something super loud, you would get sometimes a little bit of distortion um, because you were overdriving the driver. It was a pretty sensitive driver. So the change in the voice coil has made these uh, a little bit less sensitive, but has made them a lot more durable. So um, in practice, it means that you're going to hear a lot less distortion, even with relatively large amounts of EQ in the bass. Um, or pushing them really, really hard through a really, really powerful amplifier. So uh, a much sturdier um, driver. Not that the old one was necessarily fragile, but a much, much sturdier driver. Uh, and it also changes the tuning very, very slightly. Um, they've kind of smoothed, smoothed over the tuning a little bit. Um, the high end is, is taken down just a little bit. There's a sort of inner sense of damping and, and not darkness, but how would you describe it, Kat? You mentioned I, that you heard difference. I, well, because I really wanted to be in this video because when we were doing Can Jam and Grover was kind of heading that, we got the first shipment of these and I was listening to them and I'm like, I, they actually do kind of sound a lot different. And we've been experimenting with a bunch mm -hmm. of different headphone amps. Mm -hmm. So I was pumping them on a Pathos, the in-ear. We had the Envy at the time, the Felix Envy just came out. Um, we had some SPL, some Audio-Technica, and I just felt like they were a lot, um, yeah, like tighter in the bass and smoother in the top yeah. end. And I'm, I'm actually very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I really loved that the air that was presented on the old Utopia line, but this was way more controlled for me. So it was kind of cool to hear the differences about it. Yeah, the old um, ones had kind of, they could be on the right amp, they were really transparent and very fast and really, really fun to listen to. Yeah. But on, on the wrong amp or an amp that maybe didn't have the most refined treble, they could be a little bit forward, yeah. a little bit aggressive in the top end. And yeah. I think part of it was that they were showing off sometimes like if you're using an inexpensive solid state amp with them that wasn't like, didn't have super refined treble, they would show off. It would expose kinda, that. Exactly, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so this to me, it's a little smoother in the top end. It's a little... I say darker, but it's not a dark headphone. It still has right. a lot of treble right. resolution. It's open back, it's airy, it's focal. Yeah, yeah. M1 so, beryllium. Exactly, right. And I think, you know, I think that's kind of interesting. And I, you visited the Focal factory recently. Yeah, yes. So you can probably speak to this better than I can. But one of the things that I think is cool about a product like this is that Focal didn't release a headphone a couple months after the Utopia that was tweaked and improved and changed. They didn't even release a headphone a couple of years. They waited a fairly long time. I think the original yeah. Utopia came out almost eight years ago. Yeah, about that. Um, so they took eight years to basically incorporate feedback from the community, incorporate um, R&D that they had done, and tweak the product. And if you actually look at inflation from eight years ago to today, the price increase of about $1,000, or actually I think maybe more like 600 because the new I, the 2020 Utopia came with an upgraded cable and case and stuff right, like that. Right. But basically, it's it's about a thousand dollar price increase. That actually tracks with infl inflation, right? So because that tracks with inflation, in a sense, if you were to buy a Utopia today, in you know, and if it had released today, the pricing would actually not really be that different. So really, what Focal has done is just bring the pricing up. Obviously, it is very expensive at five thousand dollars. Right. It was already expensive at forty four hundred dollars. Um, but to me they haven't increased the price by like $2,000, right? They're not saying this is Utopia 2, right? They're saying this is Utopia 2022. We've incorporated improvements. We've incorporated some tweaks. But it speaks to a company that designs products that are designed to be used for a long time. Yeah. Right? Yes. And they're going to support them, right? Because Focal obviously will still support old Utopias yes. and their customer service is fantastic. Three to five years for any type of new research or mm -hmm. development for any type of driver with Focal. So they spend a lot of time on that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's cool because in the headphone realm, and not as much in speakers because obviously they're just bigger and they take more time to right. do, but in the headphone realm, there has been a trend in the past of like a company releasing four versions of a flagship in the same year. Yeah. Like, new flagship, and you're like, oh, we tweaked it, and now there's a new one this quarter. Oh, we tweaked it more, now like, and people 
it's hard to do the support right to say, hey, we're gonna, are we gonna refund people? Are we gonna charge them an upgrade fee? Like, how is this gonna work, right? Yeah. To me, the way that Focal does it is actually really, really mature, mm -hmm. and it speaks to like, this is a product from a brand. Yeah, that's a great way of selling it. An yeah. audio item from a company that makes audio stuff. Like, yeah. it's really supported. If you buy a product from Focal, it's clear where it sits in their hierarchy. Totally. It's clear that you're gonna own it for a long time. It's gonna be supported. Right, you know that it's gonna have that Focal House sound. Yeah, and humans are touching every single aspect of this. I mm -hmm. mean, it was really incredible to see um, the dude in the hazmat suit sitting in his own uh, chamber uh, <laughs> with the heated beryllium <laughs> sheets coming through on a conveyor belt, stretching and cutting, and then, you know, just making the beryllium drivers and sending them off. I mean, I, um, I haven't had a chance to really catch up with you about France, but what I thought was really interesting specifically about like the whole beryllium aspect was they, um, so every driver with Focal and every single model with Focal is gonna have its own anechoic chamber, mm. which I thought was very cool. They've been expanding their factory for over the last couple of years now. So they have even, uh, if you see like Kevin's older Sopra videos, you'll see some of those photos. They've been updated since, um, but they were, driving 10 hertz through this beryllium tweeter without it breaking structure. Mm. And I just, so they're using the M1 design in this Utopia headphone and that M1 design you guys may have seen on their website or when you're looking at all the other beryllium designs with Focal, when you take a cross section of that tweeter, it's got this like M shape, it's an inverted shape. And that really kind of helps clean up all those high frequencies mm -hmm. that you're trying to obtain. I think these have like, a frequency response of what, like f five to 50 it's or something? It's very wide, yeah. Five to 50? It's, it's much wider it's than a, headphones. Yeah, and so, you know, having a, a tweeter giving you that much energy, you wanna control it, and especially on your ears. I yeah. mean, I think it's fabulous, <laughs> honestly. It's cool, that, it's cool that you mentioned too, the beryllium, because Focal does beryllium different than almost anybody on Earth. Most people, when they make a beryllium driver, they take uh, a beryllium, like powder or spray, and they spray it over an existing driver. A coating, yeah. Yeah. And Focal's the only one that I know that does it from, like stretches the sheets and does Taking the, like forms from Utah, it and like heats it, it and like stamps it. it and and like that heating, uh, that heating um, machine is actually now assembled outside mm. of the factory them itself. And then it's, again, it's fed through the wall to mm -hmm. this person who's mm -hmm. stretching and cutting and assembling. And um, yeah, it's just genius. And you know, yeah. every so super person is, touching every single headphone before it leaves Focal's factory. Yeah, well, and I had, I had heard, I don't know if this is, maybe you can confirm this, but I had heard that they, they really do make the Stelios and Utopias, especially by hand, and that there's actually a very small number of them that can make yes. each day, like 10 or 12 or yep. something like that. Yep, nice. and the, the, amount of, uh, the amount of production that they do a, a year for drivers with headphones and their speakers, I think is like a half a million. They do like a half a million drivers a year or something like wow. that. It's insane, and their facility is huge, but honestly, the company's not that big. That's what I've heard, um, yeah. And I just I just appreciate the amount of detail that goes into this, and um, yeah. I'm just grateful to be a part of the video. Their products have so much industrial design work. Mm -hmm. Like, the speakers look fantastic, yeah. and like I always think of the Kanta speakers, mm -hmm. where like there's no, you can't tell that there's any screws on the front. Right. And if you actually look, if you take the front baffle off, they have almost, it's almost like puzzle pieces. Yeah, Where yes. the speakers like fitted together. It is. And it's extremely clever and it reduces, I, I imagine, the amount of glue and screws that they have to use. There's pallets and pallets of different MDF thickness, MDF mm -hmm. cut for every single different Focal model. That was yeah. actually insane to see like the graveyard of yeah. speakers in their factory. Um, like they yes. have a platform, but each speaker has a lot of custom. Correct. And yeah. these are cool too. Like even the small details, like these screws on the side don't have any top part to them, right? Okay. Like you can't, there's no noticeable. Oh yeah. Like Allen or, or Phillips head to them, right? Yeah. Um, there's very little in the way of like anything that appears to be like an open gap or seam. If you look in the yokes, the adjustment actually has in these metal pieces, uh, an X shape machine out of it so that the yoke can twist oh, cool. to fit your head. Yeah. It's a super, super complicated, like really intricate mechanism. Nice. And it's built just as well as the outside of the headphone. Like awesome. it's, it's super, I mean, these always, if you've held a pair of Utopias, they just feel expensive. Focal fits, I have a really hard time trying to find a f headphone that fits my head. I actually surprisingly have a very small head. <laughs> and then when I'm like <laughs> shaking my head, headphones tend to just swivel on my face and slap me across the face. 
Vocals just kind of sit really nice and snug. Mm -hmm. I just got my Batiste, so you know. Oh yeah, how yeah, are those? How do you they're like amazing. Yes. <laughs> I use those them for cool. everything. So eventually, yeah. when I set up my nightstand setup, you know, I'm probably throwing some Focals with it. But nice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's the 2022 Utopia. That's a little bit about Focal. I, like I said, I think it's a really cool brand. Um, I think it says a lot that um, they decided to re release this product as far out from the original as they did. That yeah. to me, it says a lot about the maturity of a company. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Um, and I, I think that as Kat said, you can't go wrong with a pair of Focal headphones. They just, they just feel expensive, they look expensive, they sound expensive. Yeah. Um, and they do it right, and they support the products for a long time. Totally. So. Yay. Thanks for having us, guys.